assuming my motives. And it's like, brother, you got you got a history as a Christian influencer of some stuff that's mad sus. And you and you throwing out strays at everybody. And I don't think that's correct, bro. Like, I don't think that's that's a one. You calling me fake. You calling me all these weird old things. I'm like, bro, like I haven't we've agreed on very few things, Marcus, in text messages, on live streams. We've agreed on like one or two things. And so I, I don't understand what 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 the what, what what the energy with that was. Do you want to pray first? Because you're very emotional right now, bro. You, you want to pray that ain't the kettle talk? calling the pot black, bro. You talk. You talking I, about I I'm emotional? It, bro. Bro. I own it. That's the difference between okay. you and me. I okay. own it. Last night was actually pretty interesting. I was sitting there watching the game, and I just kind of looked over and said, oh, okay, let me check this out. And I ended up going watching the regular, I think it was a 16, seven-minute response that Ruslan had because I had no idea what was what was even happening. Then there was a, you know, Ruslan has these after parties, so to speak, or after the, the whatever you call it, the live streams. You can ask questions and so forth. And so I went there, and pretty interesting. And there was... I guess the thought that uh, Marcus would show up. And so I said, let me let me sit here because I had a strange feeling. Now, I'm not a prophet. Uh, I didn't call it. But if you would ask me, I would have called it. I would have told you, yeah, he's going to be here. So I just stood there and waited. I'm going to tell you why I'm actually doing this live stream in just a second. But I want to know. I wonder if you guys can guess, if you guys can figure it out, no, it is not about just kind of rehashing what happened last night. Nope. Really isn't. Truth be told, I honestly could care less. I had another video all ready to go. Uh, and so that I had another plan. I had another direction that we were going to go into. But uh, that was interesting. But it was the issue. It was the issue that most people, I won't say all, but that most people are not paying attention. Now, there might be some. I haven't seen everyone's little response and so forth. But I've been saying this for a while. I've been saying this about him, but I've been saying this about all of these false teachers. There is something that they all have in common. Now, that being said, before I get to it, let you guys, let you guys kind of think about it a little bit and see if you can figure it out. If you want to put it in the chats and see if you can guess as to what it is. So be it. But uh, the whole thing kind of started off. <laughs> it was it was argue fest. It, it was it was a whole lot of back and forth, a lot of testosterone, a lot of a lot of uh, trying to get a word in edgewise. Marcus, can Whoa. I have one verse? I, can I have one verse that says verse, listening I to get, something will open bro, you up is, to demons? Can I have one? Bro, verse? This is silly, bro. This is silly, bro. I'm wasting my. If you're not gonna let me talk, you're doing the Marcus, same thing like guys, talk, like guys. Like, guy. Now, I'll say this. I'll say this. I thought that Ruslan did a good job. I really did. Uh, I, I'll say this. Uh, I know some of the, uh, not all of it, not intimately, but I do know that uh, Ruslan has had a kind of an open, not an open door policy, but he was, you know, at least trying to figure out what Marcus is. Because let's be honest, Marcus will say one thing and forget he said it and then say something totally different. I'm going to show you an example of that a little bit later on. But Ruslan has kind of been like, I've, and I've talked to him about it. He said that uh, he that he feels a, a particular way about Marcus and that he ought to really be more clear about it. But he, he was not trying to, uh, just for the sake of maybe possibly being wrong, he wanted to kind of give him the benefit of the doubt. And so last night was an opportunity for him to say uh, a little bit about what he felt. Now, I would have probably said a little bit more, uh, a little bit more striking, a little stronger. But then again, that's me. And so, again, I don't hold nor should you hold someone at my standard. If I if I communicate this way, then I'm not going to expect Ruslan or anyone else to communicate the same way. And this whole issue about Ruslan calling my brother. Well, uh, I've heard him at least say to me that he was kind of suspect uh, suspicious as to whether he was a brother. Uh, there were some things that he kind of wanted to find out because, again, uh, his leaning is, is that is not. But but. Uh, he wanted to kind of give at least Marcus the benefit of the doubt, but he really hadn't been all that focused. And I'll tell you, I know this, that he hadn't really been too focused on Marcus, but Marcus shot at him. And so Ruslan went back at him. And what ended up happening was just what I knew was going to happen. It's uh, indicative of Marcus's character, but not just his, 
all of the people that are just like Marcus, the same thing happened. I don't know if you all caught it or if you all saw it. So I'll play some of this and I want to see if you guys can catch on to what I, I knew this was going to go this way from the very beginning because I, I said this, what, six, seven months ago. How when all these scandals keep coming out, I think it was Ravi Zachvire and all these other people, people have all this grace for these people and all these excuses for, oh, well, you know, this happens, we fall short. But when it's me, right, I can't, I said, look, I was wrong about the Trump thing. All right. That's it. I was wrong. Yeah. So but the same. By the way, I don't I don't want to just glance over that. This issue. Of I was wrong about the Trump thing. Well, you spent all this time saying I really wasn't wrong and so forth. Now, by the way, Marcus, uh, because I know you're going to see this. You were wrong. Not only was about would Trump win reelection and that there was maybe some wiggle room to say, well, he did win. But you also said that uh, that Biden would not take the White House, that Biden would not be the president. So you covered yourself on two different false prophecies. You also had this little prophecy about um, about Alan Parr and, and tongues and so forth that you were just wrong about. But at least you're finally admitted this is one. This is a video that you cannot. Unfortunately for you, you're not going to be able to erase this one. But uh, I think I'm, I'm glad at least he clarified that. But see if you guys can pick up on something. People don't have the same grace for me when it's it's wolf when we don't like you. It's grace when it's somebody that comes from our denominational camp or somebody that we like. You guys misrepresent me with the Trinity. You guys misrepresent me with the Trump stuff. You guys are you guys are slandering me a lot. And then when Marcus. I get on here, you don't you guys say I'm ducking. I'm here, but I'm gonna be quiet. But okay, notice okay. you haven't let me finish one point. Is it's Matt fun. Chandler your brother in Christ? Is Matt Chandler my brother in Christ? As far as I think so. Exactly, I but you so. couldn't say that about me. I couldn't say that about you because your theology is sus, no, 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 bro. No, 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 no. Because he, you got some he, sus you theology. He's, he's, he's talking to other women and stuff like that, but because he agrees with you, oh yeah, he's my brother in Christ. I don't agree with him in everything. He just gets the oh essentials right. Look he gets the Trinity quick, right. He gets spiritual you, gifts look right. Look how quick you said you. When I asked you that question, you was politicking. Marcus, Marcus, but when no, I asked no, no, you about I'm Matt not Chandler, Marcus, you you're, you're jumping from seconds. Topic. Now there is something about what he said. I don't know if, if you caught. I, saw, I think I saw one person catch this. But in seeing this, I'll be honest. I'll be. I'll be completely honest. Uh, I, I really did feel bad for Marcus. I mean, I, I, I'm not I'm not just saying this just to be saying this. I actually felt um, something in my heart for him because I see uh, what's happening with Marcus. Marcus is without question insecure. Marcus is completely insecure. And it's the trait of every other false teacher, whether they be a unintentional false teacher or intentional. They are insecure. Recall back a few months back, several months back when uh, Seiko Woods had his had his live stream and he was fleshing out some things about Marcus's past. Well, it was difficult to get Marcus to come on and to defend his theology. Marcus will not come on and defend his theology. But what Marcus will do, Marcus will be Johnny on the spot to defend himself. Marcus will defend his name, but will not defend the name of Christ. Now, what happened was Ruslan asked him a few questions. And so then he went ahead and asked the questions. And we're going to look at how he answered some of these questions. Marcus is ill-equipped to lead anyone. Uh, he's ill-equipped to lead a church, much less even lead at Sunday school. Marcus is, is is lacking when it comes to understanding of the scriptures, but Marcus is always ready to defend himself. Marcus won't come out and speak to someone who is going to give it to him straight, who is going to kind of push at him and, let, and hold his feet to the fire. Though he says that's what he wants, he will not do it. But say something about him. Say something about his past. Say something about that 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 impugns his integrity or his character. Marcus will be there. Marcus will be there quicker than lickety split. Marcus, you saw Marcus. If any of you all saw this, Marcus was in the chat and he kept saying, uh, send the link, bro. Send the link, bro. OK, he sent the link. And so he came on. Marcus was not trying to leave. Marcus wanted to do any and everything he could to defend himself. How do I know that? Because Marcus also had two other live streams, one prior to going on the Ruslan and then one after to, to, to kind of fix things up. Marcus is about Marcus. Guess what? Every other false teacher is about themselves. And he's going to, interestingly enough, uh, that's a passage that I would turn to that Marcus actually quotes or sort of quotes, but he quoted it 
out of context. I'm going to get there in just a little bit, but I hope you all see this. Marcus, if I if, if, if I were to get on here and just constantly beat Marcus, not over doctrine, I can cover Marcus's doctrine all day long, all week long, all month long, all year long, and I will not hear a peep out of Marcus. But the moment that I call Marcus something that impugns his character, he's coming on. Now, you also notice that it's the same with the other people who also support and promote Marcus. I'll get to them in a second because, oh, but just because Marcus's face is on the thumbnail, it's not just about Marcus because I had an interesting time last night, not just talking or listening to Marcus, but talking to a couple other false teachers who happen to be there. Now, that particular live stream was 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 pretty um, um, lively. I think it got up to about 4,000. At least that's what I saw, 4,000 in the live stream chat. So Obviously, a lot of people were there and a lot of people from a lot of larger channels were there. I know I saw uh, John McRae from What Do You Mean? I saw the guy, Paul and, Mor is it Paul and Morgan, and a few other people. So, and I'll tell you about the the uh, the false teachers who were there that I also had a lively back and forth with. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Each and every last one of them are not brave. They'll tell you they are. They'll tell you about their power and how strong that they are not brave. What's the word that I'm looking for to describe a person who is all talk, but but no, no heart, uh, who is not brave, but wants to think, wants you to think that he's brave. What's the word you all, I'll, I'll let you all propagate it in the, in the chats. I won't say it because I want to be at least, I'll say it, chicken. I'll, I'll just go ahead and say it because you say all these things, but you will not come back and defend yourself. I'm going <laughs> to, I can't say that, Lisa. I can't say that, Senior Conrad. I won't say that, but there are some other things that I can say. And the reason why I'll bring this out is because you guys are the ones that put it in, you will put these things in our face and tell us, take it, do not question it, sit down, shut up, don't have another word to say. And if we do, we're Pharisees, we don't have the Holy Spirit, all of that stuff. But I've been calling you out for the last for the last several months. It the one person that people there are people, there were people in the live stream who I've never heard of who were saying, Hey, put Corey on, put Corey on. I was listen, I the camera was ready. If he would have sent it. I matter of fact, if he would have sent the the uh, the, the, <laughs> the live stream link before it would have shown on my screen, I would have hit it. I was out because I want if there's one person who I want to have a conversation with is him. Partly because there's also a part of me that also wonders, is he or will he be redeemed? Is is it because sometimes you can just get yourself in a situation you don't mean to, you don't know any better, but you feel like you've just gone too far. I met a lot of people in prison who uh, they're playing the role and they're acting out a certain character. But what really happened was they really kind of got mixed up with the wrong people, went a little too far. And they said, well, you know what? I've gone this far now. Might as well keep going. I might as well play the part. At, Be at Beaumont, we call it Bloody Beaumont. There were guys there who were not who, who were not from the streets, who were not tough. But when they get there, what do you do? You have to act the part. And so maybe that's what's happening with him. There's, there's a part of me that wonders that. And so I would absolutely love to have a conversation with him. If for no other reason that the people who think that this man's theology is straight, the people that think that he's coming out of the Bible, that he's right, I would love. It's not going to take very long. That's the reason why the Isaiah Saldivars, the reason why um, Alexander Pagani is the reason why Daniel Adams, the reason why Vlad Savchuk, the reason why all and they all know my name. Because what was interesting, I didn't put I, di I didn't go on with my smart Christian channel, uh, Google deal or whatever with a little black logo. No, I went with my own name. It just said my, it said be smart and my name, Corey Miner. And they knew exactly what, because they've heard it. They will not come. They won't, they will not allow themselves to be challenged, which is really, really interesting. Now he'll go to places where he thinks he's going to get, um, not too difficult of a question. Now he knew he was going to have a little back and forth with Ruslan, but Ruslan did go farther than I think Marcus thought that he would go because Marcus asked Ruslan a question. And now Marcus, I don't think Marcus was expecting the answer that Ruslan gave and Ruslan um, said it right. I think Ruslan probably could have said it even more, uh, a, a, little, a little sharper, but I was still okay with the, well, I take it back. I would have said a little bit more, but here's the question. Let me just, let's put it this way. Ruslan, am I a heretic or am I a brother in Christ? I think you have. Yes. The answer is yes, 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 yes. Ask me. Ooh, teacher, ask me. Yes, you're a heretic. 
You are a heretic if there ever was one. You are a heretic. You are a heretic of the persuasion of a Benny Hinn. You are the heretic of the persuasion of Kenneth Copeland. You are a heretic of the persuasion of all the demon slayers. You are a heretic. Yes, you are. Tell the truth. Shame the devil. Let me just, let's put it this way. Ruth Lyon, am I a heretic or am I a brother in Christ? I think you have some problematic teachings about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. This is what I'm talking about that's fake. So, this no, is what I'm, I'm talking I'm, this is what this is what I'm talking about that's fake. It's a yes or no question. But you don't want you don't want to answer because you know you're gonna get attacked. Now we've covered this before and I won't I won't go to it, but we talked about Romans 16, 17, where it says to mark and avoid and so forth. And the whole point of that passage is to mark those that cause division. And the whole point that Paul is bringing up is about doctrine, people who teach um, a, a doctrine contrary to what is biblical. That's that's literally what the pastor is talking about. And so that's him. That doesn't say that I love him, because truth be told, I do love Marcus Rogers. I would I would love for Marcus Rogers one day for him to say, you know what? I was wrong. It's happened before where someone said, you know what? I've been wrong about my whole life and it's time to change. That's why now some of you guys are going to be upset with me. Some of you guys are going to be upset with me. But that's why I was never upset with Alan Parr with what he said. Do I think it's going to work? I don't think so. But if it were to work, it would work with him and, 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 and maybe not me. Maybe not me. Uh, I'm hopeful. I am because I've seen God do it too many times, even with uh, somebody worse than um, so somebody so far gone worse than Marcus Rogers. I've seen it happen because what can happen is God can put you on your back, flat on your back. And all you can do is look up. There's there's, there's nowhere else to look but up. God, I, you got me. I'm through. Lord, I have no more fight left. Now, what do you want? And then here comes a brother who uh, disagreed with you, but but was at least I know people saying not, nah, but truth be told, someone is going to someone is going to have to reach out to that brother. If if God brings him down, who is going to be there uh, as the average white band ever was average white band said, pick up the pieces. Who's going to be there to pick up the pieces? It's going to be somebody. And so now I, I, I would I would love for it to be me, but I doubt it. Who knows? I'm, I'm, I'm ready, willing and able, but he may reach out to somebody. He may. And so if we're not open to the possibility of it happening, then we know it won't happen with us. That's just how it is. Um, how many times have you found yourself reaching out to someone who you thought would have never been your friend, would have never been there in the first place? I've had people say, Corey, I need your help. And I said, OK. And they said, Corey, really, I thought you would have said something different. No, no, because I say something kind of in your face and almost like tough love, sort of doesn't mean that I don't love you. I'll tell you what I think, but then also love you how God Want, how I want to be loved by God and how I know you ought to be loved with patience. Took me a while to get it straight. So I know it's going to take somebody like Mark. How old was I when I finally got it through my thick head that I've just messed up a whole lot? I was older than what Marcus is right now. And so it happens that way. But for the time being, for the time being right now, yeah, Marcus, you're a heretic. You're a wolf. Now, thanks be to God that he can change some wolves. He can he can turn you around. He can take a person that is either intentionally or unintentionally persecuting the church and make them into a believer. Now, one of the things, and by the way, if you if you even listen to that, that exchange, you can see Marcus Rogers uh, even still trying to what, what me, 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 me. All of that is coming out. Let me just let's put it this way. Ruth, Lyon, am I a heretic or am I a brother in Christ? I think. And so, again, the answer is no. I do not think that you are a brother in Christ. Although, if you caught the live stream, one of the issues that has always been brought up is Marcus's stance on the Trinity. If you had listened to what Marcus stated, if you would listen to his answer, he sounded just like the rest of us who hold to orthodox views of the Trinity. Marcus said that he holds to the co-eternal the, the, the co-eternality of Jesus and that Jesus is God, the Holy Spirit is God, and they all co-eternals and have existed. He 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 sounded like a Trinitarian. He really did. Do you believe Jesus is eternal? Do you believe the Holy Spirit is yes. eternal? Yes or no? Yes. You believe Jesus yes. and the Holy Spirit? Okay. You, you I've believe told in the you guys Trinity? that many times. No, uh, that's my, my that's guy. my problem with you guys. You misconstrue okay. the things that I said. I said from the beginning, the 
By the way, stop saying misconstrue. <laughs> that is, uh, this is, this is not, listen, that's not a Marcus Rogers thing. That's a whole world thing. It is, uh, especially folks that look kind of like myself, you know, a little, little darker. It's not misconstrue. It's not scrimp. It's not street. It's not misconstrue. It's misconstrue. I, I just, I, one of my pet peeves, I had to get it out there. I'm sorry. Back to the video. Do you believe Jesus is eternal? Do you believe the Holy Spirit is yes. eternal? Yes or no? Yes. You believe Jesus yes. and the Holy Spirit? Okay. You, you I've believe told in the you guys Trinity? that many times. No, uh, that's videos, my, my that's guy. my problem with you guys. You misconstrue okay. the things that I said. I said from the beginning, the lamb that was slain before the foundation, that has never changed. You can go fact check it right now. Okay. I've always said that Jesus is God. Jesus is eternal. Well, how in the world could we ever think, Marcus, that you have had some faulty statements about the Trinity. Oh, I know from your own mouth. And, you know, Jesus is a thought. And obviously people are, Jesus was a thought in God's mind. Obviously people don't know their Bible. So the Bible says what? The word was wrapped in flesh. In the beginning was the word, right? And the word was with God. Well, how was that word with God? It says it was a word. A word comes from a yeah, Marcus, that's your fault. If you're going to tell us that you believe in the co-eternality of Jesus and so forth, and then turn around and say that he was a thought. And that, as a matter of fact, you need to say that the thought had a beginning. You're the one that's causing the confusion. Listen, it's not like people are calling up or making videos about other people and their views on the Trinity. No, you give people the ammo. People aren't out here making videos and having statements to say about you and other people because we haven't heard what you said. No, it's because we have heard what you said and we are confused. As a matter of fact, we're dumbfounded when you and your, I don't know what this guy is, I guess he's some part of your church where Jesus is. What what was the number again, guys? 1,500 miles wide or tall or those kind of things. God is 1,500 miles wide or tall. I, I can't remember what it, what it was. I uh, hadn't even had the heart and the stomach to go back and watch that video again. But you say things like that. And so we say, hey, listen, can we talk to you for a second? Can we talk for a minute? Um, I want to know some things about, well, I almost, I, listen, I, the, the song was in my head. I, it almost came out. But I want to know, <laughs> the song's still in my head. I want to know what's happening with your theology. What is it that you're saying? Now, he's going to bring up something. We're going to go to, we're going to start going to the scriptures and kind of looking at what he says. And then we're going to get into the main point of this video. We're going to get into the main point of this video uh, and I've got some words. I'm hoping, I'm hoping that um, that someone who has the ear of a Marcus Rogers can just make sure he's seen this and say, Marcus, I want to talk. No, nope, doesn't have to be public. Does not have to be public. We can talk privately. I wouldn't want to talk publicly anyway because it's not going to go well. We're going to look at some of the things that you said here, and then we'll see if it lines up with the scripture. Now, Marcus has an issue with the term Trinity. We covered this before, this whole issue with the term Trinity. We'll come back to, to that part in just a second, but um, I'll play something that he just said. Well, Trinity is nowhere to be found in the Bible. Okay. No, Jesus so somebody, no, hold on, let me finish. Let me finish. I'll from be the quick. Beginning. Okay. I'll, be, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Okay. Thank you. Some guy, somebody like you or me read the Bible and they looked at the Godhead, which is the biblical term, which I believe in the Godhead. Now, before we go any further, he brings up this statement about the Trinity not being in the Bible. We covered this last week and then even, even prior. Yes, he's absolutely correct. The word Trinity is not in the Bible. It's not. The concept is. Also, we can look and find out that there is no such thing. The word Old Testament or New Testament is also not in the Bible. Now, truth be told, people say that the word Bible is not in the Bible, but actually the word Bible is in the Bible because the word Bible is derived from the Greek word biblo, which is actually in the Bible, but it's not referring to what we're referring to and it's not called the Bible. But if you want to say that, that's fine. Uh, but the word church isn't, even though we translate a word into church, but that word actually isn't in the Bible. Omnipotent is not in the Bible. I'm the present. Omniscient. Those words aren't in the Bible, but we still hold to those words. But then he camps on this word of Godhead. We're going to come back to Godhead in just a little bit. Godhead. And they said, hmm, I'm going to call this Trinity. Other people said, I'm going to call it oneness. Trinity. Neither one of those, neither one of those words are in the Bible. It is some man decided I'm going to call this Trinity and it got momentum. Okay. And now we run around, bro, do you believe in the Trinity? 
but it's nowhere to be found in the Bible. So that's okay. religious. I understand. I understand what you're saying. So let me ask you a question. Is the word omnipotent in the Bible? Yes, sir. Right. The omnipotent is not in the Bible. He's, omni, the he's word, omnipresent. Is, okay. Is, 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 the, is, 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 so that word is not in the Bible, but we would acknowledge that that is a word to use to describe God. Fair? Yes, sir. Okay. So the Trinity is not in the Bible, but we all acknowledge that it is a word used to describe the Godhead. Right, and Church some people use oneness, unit. and some Church, people no, use what, oneness. What? I don't allow words that are not in the Bible to so define you don't, me. So okay, so he said he doesn't allow for words that are not found in the Bible to define him. Now, we, this is the Smart Christians channel, where we want to be smart as best we can. We don't know a whole lot, and so that's why we can be smart, because we recognize when we don't know anything, what we'll do is, in turn go to the scriptures. So he says that he would like to rely only on the words that are found in the Bible. I did see someone put up that Christian is not in the Bible. Actually, the word Christian is found in the Bible three times. Uh, and in a positive sense, I had a video over that because people were saying, well, there is no old, there's no word Christian. Well, it actually is. They were called Christians. And Peter says to uh, don't, don't feel bad or don't let, it, let anyone look down on you because you are a Christian. So uh, what is that? Peter, First Peter 4, I believe. I can't remember the exact passage. But anyway, Paul, he brings this issue about the Godhead. Let's go and read the passage about the Godhead, the one time that is found in the scriptures. In, uh, I'm sorry, Colossians uh, 2.9, he says, for in him, the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. The reason why this says deity, some of your versions might say Godhead, right? Well, we ought to look at the word that's there, because guess what else is not found in the Bible? Hmm. Marcus, the word Godhead is not in the Bible. Let me say it again. The word Godhead is not found in the Bible. For anyone that denies that Jesus is Christ, that he is the Lord, more to the point that Jesus is God, let's look and see what the word actually is for this word that's used for Godhead. Over to the right, we have panta pleroma, which is uh, the fullness taste. Look at this word right here. This word right here is theatetas. Do you all recognize what the first portion of this word is? The first portion of this word is thea. The word theatetas or theatas is God, all of the fullness of God, who he is. All of God is in him. Which means, which means, guys, that if you were ever to deny that Jesus is God, and then you have someone says, well, the Trinity is not biblical, but the Godhead is. Well, what does the word Godhead actually mean? The Greek word. It means that he's God. So it's really the, the worst passage that they can turn to to state that they believe that Jesus isn't God and there is no triune existence, because this is literally what this passage is actually saying. And so Tech, so in truth, the word Godhead in there, but someone translated in English to make it say Godhead. That's fine. Uh, I'm not the person who's going to sit and fight about what words are not in the Bible, because if we speak English, how many of our English words do we find in the Bible? There are some cognates uh, that are in the Bible. Like if we say the word cardia, that's in the Bible because a cardio is the word for heart. Uh, but all just about every other word that we have in English isn't in the Bible because the Bible is not written in English. It's written in Hebrew and Greek and some Aramaic. And so I don't ever like to have people get in that kind of argument because it, it really is a kind of a sophomore argument um, because if the concept is there. And I like what Ruslan said. If, if uh, since the word omnipotent is not there, but we believe in the concept, then amen. Now, if you notice when he asked him that, did you hear Marcus's response? He asked him, was omnipotent, was omnipotent there? He says, yes, right? M Marcus wasn't ready for that, was he? He said, yeah, right? Like, yeah, that, yeah, that's that's right, right, right? <laughs> no, but then he, then he went to omniscient. None of those are there, Marcus. And so the issue is, Marcus, you're going to have to brush up a little bit on your, on your theology. You're going to have to br brush up on um, how you understand things. Now, I want to play something else that he has stated. Uh, he has stated that they were having this discussion about uh, one saved, always saved. And so Marcus brings up a passage out of context. Uh, let me play that. At what point is it too much? 
Like, at what point? Is it one sin? Is and it a hundred sins? That's, is it a that's thousand a good, sins? That's a good question, Ruslam. That's up to God, because guess what? Some people will sin, and they, they'll die tomorrow. Some people, they get more grace. Everybody in the Bible, the Bible says, is given a measure of grace. Uh, no, Marcus. Uh, and what he's quoting is, uh, he's actually, he's talking about a measure, measure of faith, uh, is what he was talking about. And it's not even talking about that in Romans 12. It's talking about how, as a matter of fact, let's pull up on the screen. Uh, he says, chapter, chapter 12, verse 3 says, For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to. Marcus, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought to. Um, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has given him. And his point in saying that is that if you've got any sort of spiritual giftings, any sort of spiritual abilities, then uh, use them in a humble fashion. Use them in a humble fashion. Thank you guys for the super chat. I appreciate that. Use them in a humble fashion. Marcus, sometimes you have to understand where you're wrong if you want to learn. If you, I'll never forget meeting uh, my mentor who happened, he happened to be a a, uh, a seminary professor. And when I saw it, when I met him, when I first met him, I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, ah, who's impressed? So you went to school. Okay, fine. I got the Holy Spirit. As if the guy that went to seminary also didn't have the Holy Spirit. As though he just decided to go to seminary because ah, I, don't, I don't have anything else to do. But after having some times where he would just, okay, Corey, you said this, you are completely wrong. You said this and just not just telling me, but showing me in the scripture. That's the issue that a lot of these people have. They don't want to be shown where they're wrong. Because can you imagine someone who's saying that the Lord is speaking to them and they've got all this so-called power to be wrong on basic things? Remember, Marcus is a guy that says, test the spirit by the spirit. So try the spirits by the spirit. But that's not what the, uh, the Bible says in First John. It says, test the spirits to see if they are from God. It didn't say test the spirits by the spirit. You test the spirit by what? By the book, like the Bereans did. That's what you're supposed to do. But now, Marcus made a statement. And I'm so glad that he made a statement in his later uh, conversation with himself and his followers on YouTube, on his channel. He spoke about the conversation with Ruslan. So let's play a little bit of that. And then this is going to take me into why I really have this video tonight. All of that was just the introduction. OK, all of that that we just covered, guys. What was that? The first uh, 30 minutes. All of that was the introduction. Now we're coming to the meat. Now it's going to be pretty quick. I don't think it's going to be too long, but that was just the meat. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. That was just the introduction. Okay. So now I want to get to the main point of even, this is what caused me to put this video together. That's not what I believe. And so, you know, there's this uh, perception that gets put out there, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of hard, you know, because those people will only listen to those people, they're not going to listen to nothing that I have to say. So they'll listen to somebody else say, well, this is what Marcus believes. And so I got to get on there and you can see like, you know, a lot of clarity coming to a lot of people about what I personally, you know, believe they get to hear it from my mouth. So I think that it was beneficial. I think that, you know, if more people were open to having those kind of, you know, conversations instead of just clicking up with just people that you agree with, you know, Did, did did you all hear what he just said? He's going to keep saying it, though. No, well, it can't be challenged or anything like that. You have to have those conversations because I guarantee you when you when you get around, you know, these kind of people that at least, you know, Ruslan, he's a smart guy. He's an intellectual guy. You know, uh, you have those kind of conversations It's going to open up different perspectives. I just think that if more Christians would have these kind of conversations. He said it again. Doggone it. Marcus said it again. He, he, he seems to be advocating having conversations with people you, you agree with. I'm, I, I'm trying not to lose it over. I'm really trying not to lose it over here. You know, it's not pretty. Right. But Jesus going to the cross and, and dying, it was not pretty. Sometimes to achieve certain results, you know, I always use that example. Paul withstood Peter to his face. He could have just sent Peter a letter, but he, he's like, nah, we got to talk face to face. And Peter was the type of dude, he was cutting the ears off. He had a temper. He was cussing. You, you think it just it was just a happy, nice conversation? I don't think so. 
know what I'm saying? So to me, that's that's the reality of what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we are not going to agree on some things and those hard conversations have to come out. I think more people need to start having conversations. Stop trying to dress it up and make it all cute all the time and just kumbaya. Have those hard conversations. You know, I've been doing that for a while, you know, going on different platforms and things like that. Is anybody else, is your, is your head spinning? Marcus, my brother, I, I love you to death. As a matter of fact, Marcus, Marcus is, I think, four or five years older than my oldest child. I want to adopt you, Marcus. I want to adopt you and just, right, listen, I, I'll buy you some Christmas gifts, buy you some tennis shoes and, and all that stuff like that. Um, buy you some hats and Xboxes. I'll buy you all that stuff. I want to have a... I, Marcus, if I were to confront you to your face, I can't because you'll run. You don't want what what platform have you gone on that is holding your feet to the fire? When someone tries to talk to you, you you dismiss them. As a matter of fact, anyone that disagrees with you, what do you what do you call us? Coming bear Christians, uh, fake Pharisees. We don't have the Holy Spirit. All those things, which is fine which is fine. Marcus, I can sit and have a have a conversation with a person, give me all sorts of insults and call me all sorts of names. In prison is what you do. People call you all kinds of names in your face and you just go ahead and deal with it, right? Unless you want to go ahead and get your get your stuff, they get their stuff and then we have a little fight. But but part of the deal of, of, of just being mature is I can handle I can handle someone who I think might be a little bit less mature giving me names, calling me names. If if a 10 year old Walking down the street, just started calling me names. Am I going to turn around and start calling him names back? I'm not, I won't do that. And so I can handle that. But I would love, Marcus, to have this conversation. Please, Marcus, we can we can do it in private. Or if you think you've got an angle on what I'm going to say, we can do it in public. I would love to address your issues on, on tongues. I would love to. I would love to have you tell me that every believer in the Bible uh, spoke in tongues. I would love to have you tell me that so I can go ahead and point out five verses where that that's debunked pretty quickly. I would love to have that. I would love to have you or the, as they call themselves, the the, uh, the demon slayers, the ghost bus, whatever they call themselves. I would love to have them um, have a conversation with me about demons being cast out. I would love to have that conversation. I would love to have this issue of laying on of hands and, and slaying demons and pulling snakes out of backs and so forth. I would love to have that conversation. Why? Because I could be wrong. Could be me. Could be me. Don't think so, but it could be me. We'll never know if we don't have the conversation. And so what I thought thought was ironic. And this is what got me going. This is what got me going. That what he said there and then some other quotes and then kind of putting it together with the rest of these guys. They make these statements. And it's like. Maybe if we if, if we just respond in kind, the 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 the, the brashness the uh, testosterone that you guys seem to be coming out. You guys have got a lot of wind in your chest when you're saying some of these things, uh, but you kind of disappear when it's time to have this conversation, right? Uh, Marcus says that uh, he's ready for any sort of conversation. He's weak. Ain't nobody else about that life but Marcus. And you got yes man gassing you up. Then you get mad when somebody come and hold your feet to the fire and caught real ones. No, bro. Y'all not about that life. Y'all do not represent the kingdom. The Lord told me to get on here and tell y'all a lot of these Christians is ducking the smoke. And God is looking for some individuals who say, I want all the smoke. Like that one meme, I want all the problems. I'm not ducking Goliath. You know what? I'm not going to bow down if you threaten to throw me in the fire. I want all the smoke. I want all the problems. Marcus, you don't want any smoke. You don't, you, you've been ducking me for the last seven months. You've been ducking me. Brandon Tatum, who made a promise on this channel, said that he would come back and have this conversation. I said, Brandon, you don't mind having a political conversation. You'll talk about the Democrats all day long. Come talk about the devil. Come talk about Jesus. Come talk about the Bible. Let's have this conversation. Uh, nowhere to be found. So, okay, fine. But you're ducking me. Ye who casteth out demons. I try to say it in the in the King James Version way. Ye who casteth out demons. Uh, you're afraid of me. And I don't think that I'm a person that you ought to be afraid of. I am, listen. I'm not, I'm not the biggest, the baddest, the toughest. None of that. 
uh, and you saying that um, how none of, no one is built for this but you and you want all the smoke. Well, listen, smart Christian channel at Gmail. I'll send you the link. Or we can just have a conversation. We can change. We can exchange emails or, or phone. Well, I guess you have my email, but we can exchange phone numbers, all that stuff. And we can just talk. Just you and I, we can have a conversation. Now, I mentioned that during the live stream, I saw one of my buddies. So far, every last one of the Demon Slayers has has mentioned me and said something and so forth. Um, but they won't. They, I don't I don't get it. And I've offered I've offered to where they have their little panel and it's four or five or six of them together. Bring me in. I'll talk to all five or six at the same time. Not that it'd be one on five or six um, because it'd be two on five or six. Me and the Bible versus you five. They won't do it. They will not do it. And so in the chats, I saw um, Troy Black. <laughs> he wouldn't comment. I saw Mr. Pagani. He was just there looking. He was. I said, hello, uh, Pagani. He didn't want to speak. OK, fine, uh, because Pagani has me blocked. Pagani has me blocked because I said something about his friend. So Pagani didn't want to talk to me. After he released the video, um, after he deleted the video from Isaiah, then he went and released another video about my friend Isaiah. Um, um, I blocked him everywhere. So I have him blocked on my phone. I have him blocked on email. I have him blocked on all of my social media pages. So I have no idea. I ought to just tag him every time I do a video because you can't block that. I can just tag you. I won't do that because I'm not trying to, uh, I'm not trying to pick at you. I'm just trying to have, a, I've been trying to have this conversation and you got mad at the fact that I simply um, voiced my concern about about your doctrine and your friend's doctrine, how I think it's destructive. You think it's the other way around, but you won't defend it. You now, literally, literally, he nor his friends will defend their doctrine, but they will defend each other. You all have seen in other live streams where we're talking about this and Mike Signorelli shows up or Vlad Savchuk shows up to defend their friends. But OK, fine. Instead of defending them, defend your Bible, defend your doctrine, because if if what you're saying is true, then don't you think that our souls are worthwhile? Don't you think that the people that are listening and that will listen, don't you think that their souls matter? Don't you think that they matter to God? Obviously not. Maybe just those that support you uh, and that may fill your coffers, maybe they're the only ones that matter. But I think that every single person that has ears, they matter. That's what I think. Now, whether they accept it, that's one thing, but at least you should be willing to have this conversation. Let's just say, let's just pull up what uh, Peter says. He says in 1 Peter 3, verse 13, he says, Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? If you are, that is, that is, that is what he says, if you are zealous for what is good. Not zealous for your own thing, but if you, no one's going to harm you if, you if you're working for the Lord, which means you're doing what is good. Who's there to harm you? Let's keep, let's continue. He says, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. So listen, if you get into it um, for the sake of the Lord, he says you'll be blessed. But that shouldn't bother you guys because you guys have enough, have enough testosterone, have enough uh, air in your chest that shouldn't bother you. You guys, as a matter of fact, we, we know, we know it won't bother uh, Daniel Adams because Daniel Adams is the guy that always brings the fact that he used to uh, do cage fighting, I guess, four, three or four times that he, that he did some cage fighting. And he's the guy that's willing to fight other Christians. I mean, slap somebody. You won't swing, homie. You ain't you ain't <laughs> even built. Like, you ain't even built like that. You little dude with the beard and you look crazy or you're you're a dude with glasses and you ain't no way you try my life. <laughs> All you're doing is bumping those guns, because as soon as you come try me, you know, physically, I'm going to destroy you. Yeah, that that that's the guy. And so you guys can't be afraid, by the way, that that particular clip. I love I, I love that clip. I love that clip. He, can I just tell you all the truth? Yeah, I just tell you all the truth. You, do you know how many guys we've seen that who would say stuff like that and w would retract that? No one is impressed by that stuff. What believer wants to hear you say that you and by the way, that was, I believe, directed at Justin Peters or someone else, someone older. And your response to them calling out your doctrine is you won't swing on me. What? You you won't swing on me. 
that tells us how much confidence you have in your understanding of the Bible, which is which is which is pretty small. But let's get back to it. So you shouldn't be worried about being harmed. Look what he says. Have no fear of them since you since no one's going to swing on you. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ as Lord, as holy, always being prepared to make a defense. Uh, Apologian, which is to give an answer to anyone, to anyone uh, who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, Marcus Rogers, all these other folks that are always worried about someone possibly slandering them, they're not being slandered, but if you think you're being slandered, look, look what he says, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile you, those who revile you, who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good than uh, if that should be God's will than for doing evil. Uh, I found this out, that if you're going to get in trouble, you might as well get in trouble for doing the right thing. You might as well suffer, have some heartache for being on the Lord's team. But you guys don't have to worry about that because you guys are uh, demon slayers. You guys have all the power. You can cast demons out of everybody. You can just... You can make you can touch my head and make hair grow back. I don't want hair to grow back because I like being aerodynamic. Um, I like I like the uh, the haircut that God gave me. But if I did, I can come to you. You can lay hands on it, and I can grow. Could you imagine uh, Daniel Adams laying hands? I get a Jerry curl, like 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 Michael Jackson back in '83. Some of you young folk don't don't know what Michael Jackson's curl looked like back in '83 with the little baby little thing right there. Right? Yeah, Daniel Adams can do that. Thank you, uh, Michael Lemay, for the for the super chat. But you guys have that much power. You should be able to do any of those things. You should be able to walk the streets and folks just your shadows uh, hitting people and folks who had bad back. They just straight up because you because you walk in front of them. Right. You you should be able to take your clothes to goodwill. And then the person that buys your clothes should just be blessed. They, they should just um, their bones strengthen because, again, you guys are that type of person with that type of power. Now, the Bible says this. This matter of fact, this is what Jesus says. He says, blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evils against you falsely on, look what he says, on my account, falsely on my account. And so, you know what you want to do? You want people to slander you. You want people to say all sorts of things on his account. He says, blessed are you, happy are you. God is the one that's going to reward you. Be not weary in well-doing for in due season at the right time. I think you guys are trying to reward yourselves, trying to keep all the smoke away you say you want it. But so far, thus far, nada. Now, let me ask you guys a question. Because I haven't seen it. And so I might I might be wrong. I might be wrong. Have any of you ever seen Pagani? Saldivar, Daniel Adams, Catherine Crick, Vlad Savchuk, any of those people, have any of you ever seen them have a debate? I've never seen I've, I've never seen them have a debate. I've seen them go to places where someone is in like they have a like view, like minded in terms of scriptures, and they may discuss little nuances and so forth. But I've, I don't think I've ever I could be wrong. Bro. I, I could be wrong. But I don't think I've ever seen them have a debate. I don't think I've ever seen them even want to have a debate. As a matter of fact, I've seen them get together and critique other people, which is fine. Listen, doctrine is fair game. If you disagree with my doctrine, hey man, there are 70, 80, 90 videos about me. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a heretic. I'm evil. I'm going to hell. All these things. All right. Most of that, if, if any of it is about doctrine, but there's a lot about doctrine. My doctrine's off. No problem. Hey, listen, you have a perfect right to say that you think that my doctrine is wrong. But you should also be willing to, again, I've said it before, if you're going to talk about someone, you should be willing to talk to them. But the problem is these guys are not even willing to be talked to. You'd block somebody, all of them that blocked me. I, I will give Marcus Rogers credit. He has not blocked me. But I don't think Marcus Rogers blocks anybody. I, I, don't, I don't even think he even really cares. He just goes about his business and so <laughs> maybe, maybe I, I, I'll give him credit for that. But for everyone else, you need to see if you have some validity in Marcus Rogers or in these other people in the Isaiah Saldivars. Someone said, hey, Corey, 
Um, uh, why do you speak about them? Well, in comparison, again, to what else we do on the channel, it's not even it's not even close. But when I do speak about them, uh, I am justified. If I see them driving down the street, I'm going to pull over and we gonna have a conversation. I wish they would. I wish they would come to Dallas. I wish they would. Somebody said Pagani will definitely debate me. No, Pagani said he wouldn't. Listen, uh, epic way. Pagani on this channel said he's not going to debate me. He didn't want to. He wanted to have a conversation where, where he can show that we could all get along. Go back on the on the channel and watch the video. He didn't want to debate me. They do not want to. Um, I would I would love to see them debate someone else. Then it didn't have to be me. I think I've shown myself to where I'm not going to be belligerent. I'm not going to do the name call and so forth. I'll give them time to kind of um, speak. You you've been blocked too, Christina. <laughs> you know what's funny? It's it's really not even a big deal when someone blocks you. Um, if I'm if I'm only talking about your doctrine and I'm not there all the time, why would, what's the point of being blocked unless you feel like you don't want anyone to see uh, your shortcomings when it comes to scripture? Which is fine, which is fine, which is fine. What did the guy say? The uh, Saldivar said, "You only, you only, <laughs> you only use my name to get views." And then I did the little the little. You remember the little example where I, I typed in his name uh, into the little the little two buddy deal and and it showed the score. And then I typed in my name and then it showed the score. Like, no, I'm not using your name for anything. As a matter of fact, your name is a negative. It's, it's a detriment. But what I am concerned about, not your name or you, Pagani. I'm concerned about you, but I'm, I'm concerned about the people. Isaiah Saldivar is arrested. I'm concerned about the people who are trusting in you, telling them that the Jesus Christ that they place their faith in has no power except the power that he gives to you to lay hands on them that the Holy Spirit in them is not powerful enough to keep out any sort of demonic influences. They need you to douse them with oil and lay hands on them and speak for five hours to call some imaginary demon out and then send this demon to the pit that comes right back out of the pit in five seconds. That's the problem that we have. And you guys don't want to have this conversation again. Sit down, shut up, talk tough. Don't, don't respond to me. Take what I said as the gospel truth. And then turn around and compare yourselves to Jesus. The Pharisees persecuted you. They didn't believe Jesus. Well, you're not Jesus. And we're not the Pharisees, by the way. So, uh, but I wanted you all to notice that. I wanted you all to notice it. It wasn't so much the bickering going back and forth. Um, every time they speak, they speak from a place of them being important. They speak from a place of their experience, what God has done in, uh, through them, what they're doing. We can't, we're cat. Because ask yourself this question. How do you set up in advance? How do you stay? They and I've, I've, I've seen some of their flyers already because YouTube just sends them my way. Where they're going to have one of I forget who it is is going to have a mass delivering sometime in October. October, whatever date, we'll have, we're having a mass deliverance at this on this day, at this location. All of you have been bound who have been struggling, who have been tortured and tormented by this demon, that this demon will not release you. Tell your demon to bring you here on this date at this location so we can cast that demon out. Does that even make sense? How do you even know? How do you even know that uh, the, the people are going to be there that have a demon? And this is the foolishness that we don't, that they don't want to deal with. Let me say this to all of you who, who believe and follow these people. My question to them, and they can't answer the question, uh, is why don't we see anyone being told to cast a demon out of them after after the foundation of the church is laid, after every people group has received the Holy Spirit? From Acts 19 on, we don't see it. No more demons being cast out. Why is that? Paul's talking to Timothy and Titus, two young pastors, training them, teaching them. He never once tells them when things are going bad, cast a demon out. All the problems going on in the church of Corinth. He has to write two letters. He never brings up casting a demon out. Why is that? Why is that? Well, because they already knew how to cast demons out. It was just, no, they didn't. No, they didn't know how to cast demons out. That was, remember, these are uh, Gentiles in Corinth, not in Jerusalem. These are Gentiles. And they, now, if it was so familiar to them, Paul, Paul and Peter, the issue of prayer comes up. Paul tells them to pray. James tells them to pray. Prayers brought up, so why isn't casting demon brought up? Because these guys are lying. Either, either they're lying or they are biblically ignorant, 
And neither are good looks for people who are trying to lead other people. Neither are. Uh, Doranda, thank you, sister. I, I appreciate that. Neither are good looks. And what you're doing is you're hurting people. You're harming people. So uh, I want you all to be aware. Jesus says that false Christ and false prophets will arise. He didn't say that just because. He meant it. And we are certainly in a day where we have a bunch of false prophets. Again, I said this the other day. Or was it yesterday? You don't have to worry about who, who Jesus is talking about. He's not talking about me. He's not talking about you guys. You know how I know he's not talking about you or me? Here's how we know that Jesus was not referring to me or to you. Because he says that these false prophets are going to come uh, with these signs, these wonders to try to show something. I haven't even been trying to show any signs or wonders. All I ever do is just go to the scripture. Uh, reading Hebrew and Greek is not a sign or a wonder at all. I promise you that. Uh, thank you, Mark. Uh, it is not a sign or a wonder. So he, so he's clearly not talking about me. I'm not coming with any sort of signs or wonders. I'm coming to investigate you with the scriptures. This is why I say I don't have to worry about gifts having ceased. Nope. Fine. You think you got the gift of tongues? You think you got the gift of healing? You got this gift? Got Fine. So what I'll do is I will take my Bible and when you say X, Y, Z, I'll just turn to it and see. Uh, wait, wait a second. That's, <laughs> this is a Hebrew Greek Bible. I went the other way. Wait a minute. That's not how this works. You said, and by the way, we're going to cover this issue of when he, when he what the Greek says about um, praying in, or he speaks in his own spirit or speaks in the spirit. In the spirit, he speaks mysteries. In 1 Corinthians 14, 2, it, is he saying speaks mysteries in the spirit or in his spirit? Hmm. All you folks that believe in speaking in tongues and run to that passage, you might want to find another. We're going to cover that. Uh, right at the divine word. Appreciate it. I, I really do. Thank you all. Thank all of you uh, for the super chats as well. And so my only point is this, guys. And let me just let me just let me just be sincere as we get ready to close out. Let me just be sincere as we get ready to close out because I'm actually I'm not I'm actually not in a good mood. I'm really not. I'm having a bad I'm, I'm having a bad 24 hours. Why? Because the Cowboys won. And so it, it by, my soul uh, is is in, in torment right now. I'm, I'm bothered right now because the Cowboys won. But have no fear. Next week we'll be here and the Cowboys will be back to losing. But let me just tell you all um, what my passion is. <laughs> yeah, Dinah's laughing. When I was down in prison, yeah, and you'll hear me refer back to this because it was the worst time in my life. But as close as me and God got, it was the one time I couldn't I couldn't do things to occupy my time, to take my focus anywhere else. It was just me and God. It seemed like things would get worse and worse and worse. It's like, oh, Lord, what's going on? Lord, it's almost like you got a button in heaven that you push every day to pick on me. Like Charlie Brown. Some of y'all remember that. Why is everybody always picking on me? You just keep pushing this button, Lord. No, what he was doing was strengthening me. He was bringing me closer to him. He was bringing me closer to him. I remember, I remember, um, my mother giving me a hug. I, I, I was three or four. And her squeezing me. Mama, you squeezing too tight. She's, I just want you closer to me. I'm close enough. Mom. No, I want you even closer. She's squeezing. That's what God was doing to me. That's what God was doing to me. Sque bringing me closer. No, boy, I want you closer. I want you closer. And when I, and when I thought I needed something, when I thought I needed a miracle, you know, you know what God gave me when I needed a miracle? You know what God gave me when I needed a blessing? You know what God gave me when I thought I needed something supernatural? He gave me something supernatural. He gave me a miracle. He gave me a blessing. He gave me his word. That's what he gave me. And so when someone says that you ain't never experienced supernatural, well, you're not a Christian. And if you think if you think that I have not experienced supernatural, you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian. If God delivering me Early, five years earlier, you think I haven't experienced supernatural? You're not a Christian. If you think that I, that me being a Christian means that I haven't experienced supernatural, you're not a Christian. Maybe it's you that has the demon and not us. 
Because if you're not willing to work in the one thing that we all have been given the exact same measure of, maybe you do have more of a gifting over here. And she's got more of a gifting over there. And they've got more of this and more of that, more of this. You know, the one thing we all have in common, what's the one thing that we all have in common? Thank you, Terry. The one thing that all of us have in common is word. That's the one. We got the exact same measure of this word. I don't know if your book has more pages than mine. If it does, something wrong. If you got more books than I got in my Bible, something wrong. We got the exact same thing. Why? Why? Why do we have a list of men and women who died to bring us this book in English and in Spanish, in German, in Mandarin, in any just about any language, at least more than any other book? Why? Because God wants us to have his word, his message. That's why. And you guys poo poo on that. You guys pour water on that. Shame on you and God help your soul. You're going to pay for that if you don't repent. For the rest of us, Let's just relish the fact that he gave us his word and gave us his spirit. All of us have been baptized into one spirit. All of us. And so, Marcus Rogers, I hope that uh, you reach out. I really do. I can promise you uh, we can have a good conversation. We can have. A, listen, I got a, 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 a YouTube buddy. He's a hair. He's a hair heretic. Yeah, he's a he's a hair heretic. Goes by the name of Seiko Woods. He's a hair heretic. You know why I say he's a hair heretic? Because God has blessed him not to have hair. And he wants to cover it up. But you know what? We can still fellowship. Good do. Even the guys that don't like me still love you to death. Still love you to death. It's not. A, there's not a. Listen, there is not a person on YouTube or a person out there that I don't like. I take it back. I'm. I'm lying. There are people I don't like. There's not a person who I don't love. And who I will not go, uh, who I will refuse to go the extra mile for. Somebody said hair tick. <laughs> Neil said hair tick. But the truth be told, there's not a person in here who, would, if you reach out to me, that is if you can get a hold of me. I am pretty busy, but if you reach out to me, I'll do what I can. I'll do what I can. Somebody, I thought he was, I think, I think Scott was testing me. Uh, he asked me a question about Greek. I'm riding the car. I was like, oh, what is this? Okay. Uh, there are people, if you get a hold of me, I will talk to you. I will talk to you. Um, and so uh, I want us to be open enough, loving enough to at least be that way towards other people. And if someone disagrees, hey, listen, I disagree with you. Um, but if you name the name of Christ, uh, you place your faith in Christ, then good. We're all going to eat at the same table being served by the same daddy. That is Jesus. So I want to thank you guys for being here. I pray that you all are doing well. If there's anyone that needs anything, prayer, anything like that, reach out to me. Um, and we can all, you know what, employ the entire body. We can get to praying. So you all be well, and I will see you all tomorrow. Amen.